What's going on everyone? Magnus here. Today, the electricity in the air is palpable as I've decided to take on this project, which is a drinking horn that a friend of mine has had for quite some time. Many parties, many events, many lips, and amazingly enough, I did this strap for it forever ago. And I didn't even remember doing it. I think I just hoped I didn't do it. Well, I'm back with another video to do with etching and metalwork. I haven't done a lot of it so far on this channel, and I'm really happy to dive in. Right now, I've got a piece of bronze. I've sanded it. I've used some uh, rubbing alcohol to get rid of any debris. And now I'm putting my design on this burner. Now, I'm going to link right here to the other etching video I did where I go into more detail. But I'm using a special kind of paper to transfer my printed image onto my metal. And that'll offer a resist against the etchant that I'm going to use. I'm using an Edinburgh etch for this process. I'll link it down below. You guys can check it out or you can check out my other video. So we quenched the piece because it was warm. It's cooled our ink transfer, which is from a laser printer. Now we touch up any mistakes and then we cover any of the parts with tape that we want to be sure aren't etched, any of the larger spots. So the back and up around some of the edges. Then we're going to take this whole piece and we're going to tape it onto a foam block and suspend it in our etchant. And then we're going to walk away for a little bit. And we'll be back every once in a while to make sure that it isn't getting any gucky buildup. Now, this etch took about two hours. And it was really good after two hours. So, I'm just warming up the water that will warm up the etchant a little bit. And I've rigged this spray gun to agitate the etchant to make it work better. And this was by far the fastest etch I've done so far. I haven't done a lot, but it was really fast. So after this is all done, I put it in a water and baking soda mix to neutralize the acid. And then I add more water and more water as I drain it out and make sure it's all very, very watered down. After that, we're going to pull everything off of this piece of foam. We're going to start removing any debris. We're going to start removing the leftover parts of our resist. I love scotch brights for this. I think for a moment here it may show that I used uh, sandpaper really briefly, but scotch brights are great for this. And if something's not coming away, I am just use a piece of coarser sandpaper or sanding block. This etch turned out great. I did have a bunch of problems, but it was because I was using etchant that had... I'd actually done a lot of etching with it, so it was worn out and I had to redo it so that solved that problem you'll see or might have seen earlier that there was a design on the back of this piece that's me trying to make this piece work earlier with a bad etchant and it just wasn't working the Beverly shear makes short work of this bronze you can easily cut it with some metal shears it's not very thick I sand all the edges down make sure everything is straight and not burred and not sharp after I've done a quick coarse sand on it I'm gonna go through finer and finer grits until all the edges are nice just to make sure I don't cut myself because I cut myself all the time and I'm getting a little tired of it. Once we have everything sanded nice it's time to break out the jacks and patina this metal to make it really pop. Now this video is sponsored of course by Lonsdale Leather. I mentioned that on almost every one of my videos and though this has not a lot of leather in it they do have jacks which is great for patinaing metal. So be sure to check out the description of this video for links to their website where you can get all sorts of stuff, including the jacks. After that, because we've used the patina on it, we're going to put it in our baking soda solution again, neutralize that acid, buff up our piece with scotch brite pads and sandpaper and anything you can think of, and take it to the level that you you want it at. Do you want it really dark or not? So we're just I'm buffing it up fairly, fairly well. Then I'm going to start bending it a little bit by hand just to get a general idea of how it's going to shape around the horn. Now, because the horn is tapered, in theory, our pieces should taper a little bit at the edges so they butt up nicely. But I had a plan for this already. I would measured around and made sure everything was going to fit. And then I was just going to slowly adjust it on the fly. Now, because I'm going to bridge the gaps between these pieces, there's three pieces going on the rim. I'm going to bridge them with a piece of metal to hide the seam. I wasn't too worried about it, so you'll see how that goes. So I'm just going to keep 
bending my metal until I'm happy with how it's going to sit on the horn. And then we're going to start riveting our pieces on. Now we're going to rivet them on from the center out, top down, because we want to make sure it's nicely on the top edge and we can adjust as we go. We don't want to put in any of the corner rivets, obviously, because we're going to bridge those with another piece of metal. And because I'm crazy, I decided that I was going to make a custom ring for this. I've got O-rings all over the place, but I wanted to try making a ring. Because I'm on this metalwork kick, like, this isn't my thing. I don't really do this kind of stuff, so this is me winging it, making a ring out of a piece of uh, round wire. And I think I made three rings, because I kept breaking them because I wasn't annealing them properly. I was hammering them too much, they'd split. I finally got it down, lots of good practice. I don't even know if this is the actual one. Yeah, that is the actual one, that's the successful one. But I split them a bunch. Yeah, it's a ring, it's kinda cool. Now I'm just checking the placement because those letters are in the way. I figure out where I want them. And then I'm going to use this punch to make all my holes. Because you're working with a curved piece, if you're doing this kind of stuff, don't rush your holes. Make sure everything is placed nicely. Punch them, put a rivet in, don't peen it, pull it off. Make sure you're all lined up because especially if I'm drilling into this horn, I don't want to be making a mistake where my rivet goes. That post is way, 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 way too long. but. It's fine for what we're doing here. I'll peen it down just fine, but it could have been half that size. That's ridiculous. Now, peening the very deep inside of this horn was a giant pain in the butt. I got it done. I may go back over it and check them all, but it was a it was a giant pain in the ass to rivet that deep in. I need some some specialty hammers. Some I don't know long headed curved weird hammers is what I need. Here I am lining up that first stag and now we can see where it needed to taper and I'm gonna just sand that off really quick and come back and check it. There that's great. I'm gonna mark the center point, eyeball the other one because that's how I roll. And then we're just gonna mark our top hole, bottom and rivet those in place. Then we're gonna go over to the other side and do the same thing and make any micro adjustments we need until all three of our pieces are riveted on generally in the center line. Now we need our strips for our bridging so I'm going to cut three strips out of this 20 gauge bronze. We're gonna curve the ends of this because it'll look, look cooler if it's curved I guess and then we're going to sand everything up and cut it to length and start to bend it and punch holes and do more really pain in the butt level riveting. If I could have a do-over, I would probably etch these as well. They could be cool with some lines on them, or maybe chase some lines on them. Which I haven't done a lot of chasing repose, but I might like to start playing with that too. Something to give them a little more oomph. Stamp them with some triangles or who knows. Do something different than just plain, but they still look pretty cool. Sand them all down, get them all nice and ready for your attachment. We're going to end up patinaing these as well, so it's good to sand them, make sure everything is clean and ready to go. After we've got it all prepped, I'm going to check the measurement off the edge of the horn and kind of eyeball where I want it to come around. And then I'm going to put a line on all of them and punch a hole in all of them to make sure they're all the same for that spot specifically. Now one of them is longer because it's going to be holding the o-ring, but at the top they should all be the same. So once we got our holes done, we are going to take it over to this stake of my studio mate. He is Drawbridge Props. Check out his YouTube. There will be a link down below. He does all sorts of crazy stuff. He made a Lannister helmet. That's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I'm going to bend this over the post on all of them and try and make it the same. And then I'm going to drill through so we got our rivet spot all the way through. There, that looks pretty good. Mark it, drill it. That's a terrible halfway measurement. Look at that. And I realize that after a second, I'm like, wait a, wait a second. What is, what is this craziness? Where's another ruler? 
I don't know how I measured that at all the second time even, but at least it looks more centered now. These punches are great. They're also Levi's. Here we are. Mark it, drill it, and just do the top. That's a better size uh, post to hammer in. So we pin that down. And you can generally see where this is going. We're going to be drilling holes, throwing in rivets, drilling holes, throwing in rivets, until this is done. Because a lot of this is the same, I'm just going to take this time to remind you that on my Etsy website and Patreon, I do artwork and patterns for sale on Patreon. Anything I make gets released to Patreon the month it's made and then I take it down at the end of the month and I put up the new stuff and I take it down. And, but everything's on my Etsy and website if you just want to go that route. These images that are on this horn are on there and you are free to use them in your crafting projects and sell them if you want. Like you can put them on your, a pouch and sell it. If you buy my pouch pattern and you make one of my pouches, you can sell that pouch. You can't sell the pattern, but you can sell the pouch. And you can sell the artwork on the pouch. All really easy. This year has been ridiculous to say the least. Hopefully we all come out of this in one piece. I really appreciate all the support from you guys. Can't wait to see what you guys come up with. I get a lot of cool posts on my Discord channel, on my Facebook, all sorts of great stuff. So keep them coming. I love to see the work you guys have done. This part with the O-ring was the only thing that I wasn't perfectly happy with. Perfectly happy with? Totally happy with? You know what I'm saying. Like, I wasn't generally happy with it. It turned out fine, but it could have been a little smoother. It just looked a little rough to me. But whatever. It's not the end of the world. So then we are just going to patina everything. I'm going to take this time to patina all my rivets too, since they were never patinaed. We're going to do a little scotch bright rough up. Um, we're gonna realize that the ring is on backwards. I fixed that. Then uh, we're just gonna rub some baking soda on it and water, make sure everything is good, and clean it up. that was a ton of fun hopefully you enjoyed this video as much as I did putting it together I think I got to revisit this horn and add some more stuff to it honestly make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video hit that notification button so you don't miss any of my content and until next time score